<laughs> oh yay, this is so fun. <laughs> All right, so we're going to get started in a couple minutes. Really excited to be here. Um, if you do have any questions for me as we go through, feel free to pop it into the chat. And there's going to be a Q&A session afterwards that we're definitely going to be able to get into. Hi. <laughs> it's funny. I was like going over my slides and I was all like, wait, I've got five minutes. I have to get onto the platform. Eee. So, I mean, I'm excited. <laughs> I'm good at this fully caffeinated, feeling really good. Oh, this is such a fun day. So we're gonna probably get started. Awesome, thank you so much. I'm gonna get started maybe a couple minutes after four, um, just to make sure everybody's got a chance to go in, probably like two minutes after four. So if you are in here um, and you want to grab some water, if you want to grab uh, a pen and paper, you totally have the ability to do so. Yay. <laughs> and uh, I'll be here. I'll be here waiting for you. <laughs> oh, today is a great day. Hi, everybody. I'm super excited to do this session. Um, crowdfunding is something that I'm absolutely in love with. Um, and I have the opportunity to support not only myself, but other people with uh, launching their brands and their businesses through it as well. And I feel like it's something that's definitely underutilized, especially for women, and then especially for people of color. Like there's just so many opportunities to not make it difficult to not struggle, not to do things on your own. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to give, if anybody didn't hear that, give you guys a couple, a couple minutes, about two minutes before we get started. And um, hi, <laughs> oh my gosh, so many fun people. And if you want to connect with me after, there's going to be some information to do so as well. Uh, again, we're going to have the Q&A and everything too, so it's going to be really great. Um, while we're waiting for people to pour in, feel free to let me know in the chat, like, what is your business or what is your idea? I'd love to learn a little bit more about you and what you're doing. And then that's also going to support with uh, some of the examples. I like to pull some things out. So support with some of the examples that we have going forward. Cold press juicing. Oh, yes. I feel like I need some juice now. It's funny. I've been doing a cleanse for the last couple of days, so this is fun. Cold press juicing. Thanks so much, Tanya or Sue Tanya. Um, anybody else? What businesses do y'all have? Mental health kits. That's good. That's really good. Natural pain management, marketing agency, clean sun care. Okay, honestly, like y'all are are. I don't want to say you're making me excited, but you are because I feel like a lot of these projects will get really, really good um, results when it comes to using crowdfunding as well. So with that, I think we've got, where was it? About 12 people in here. Gorgeous, gorgeous. I'll give you about like one more minute and then we'll get going because I, I want to be conscientious of everybody's time and then leave enough time for Q&A as well. Laundry sheets. Oh, and you're in the UK. I love the UK. I need to go back like swiftly. Um, and laundry sheets is a big thing. I anticipate that the um, the margins are actually pretty nice on those because I keep seeing a lot of new laundry sheet companies coming up. So, oh wait, I should say dryer sheets, not laundry sheets. I'm not sure if you're. I think I'm talking about the same thing that you're talking. About. Anyway, with that, let's get started, shall we? Yeah, laundry shoes, yeah. Okay, see, look at that. You've already got so many people that you can um, start converting already. All right, so getting into this, um, 
If you haven't had the opportunity to meet me as yet, hi, <laughs> my name is Cheryl Sutherland and I'm super excited to be here to talk to you a little bit more about your product-based business and using crowdfunding. Like I had touched on before, crowdfunding is a very much underutilized option for um, starting your business and funding your business that actually is super, super supportive, especially for women, women of color. We like to do things on our own and like, you know, we don't have that sort of outgoing mentality so much in regards to just asking for loans or asking for VC money. But this is actually a really effective way to grow in a lean way um, that will not only activate your network, but then make sure that your business is set up for success. All right, so we're gonna go through some things uh, where we're talking about my company, my experience with growing through Kickstarter and some of the uh, results that I've had, some really great statistics. What platform is gonna be best for you? Is crowdfunding a really good move for you or should you look somewhere else? Uh, four things that you do wanna have in the bag before you move forward with a crowdfunding campaign and then some next steps. So, hi, <laughs> I have this amazing line of affirmation filled goods and I started my company when I was living in California about six years ago. Um, I think perhaps at the time, if anybody here is familiar with uh, being Mary Jane and put something in the chat if you are, I, was, I know for myself, I was at this point in my life where I felt that I forgot who I was, that I was not clear on um, how amazing I was, how powerful I was, how smart I was, how capable I was. And so I really needed a way to remind myself. And I thought, what better way than sticky notes? And so this is actually the original sticky note that we had. Um, and then, you know, we I ended up getting very clear on what I wanted it to look like, found a manufacturer and um, ended up printing them. But in order to print these sticky notes the way that I wanted them, where there was an affirmation on every single page, like a different one, um, that I needed to actually order 10,000 units worth. And um, yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot of units. And so with that, my uh, garage ended up being completely filled with boxes. My roommate was not super happy about that. But I had my product, I had my business, I had my Shopify store, I was selling them. And after about like three or four months, I was like, wait a second, I did not move to California to sell sticky notes. Like I never had a passion for a stationery. I never wanted to have a stationary company. And so I was like, what is the next best step? What is the next thing to grow this? And if I wanna support people with their personal growth journey, one of the biggest things for me that supported me was a journal. So I actually created a journal with like different exercises, affirmations on all these pages, really helping people really figure out what is their next steps in life, build that confidence and that self-esteem. And so they can really go, and, go after the things that they wanted. However, to create the thing the exact way I wanted it, I needed to order a thousand units and there's no way that I could have funded that by myself. Um, when I found my manufacturer, it was like hunky dory, but I was also very clear that the way that I had been running my business so far, where I pre purchased a bunch of stuff and like tried to sell it, I wasn't too fond of. I was like, this feels like it's too much work. So instead of taking a look at, you know, doing a pre sale where I'm just like, yeah, guys, buy the thing. Pre-sales are tricky because it doesn't give people a certain amount of time frame. So if I pre-sell something now and then I only get enough money to actually pay for all the product four, five, six, seven, eight, nine months from now, how is that really supporting the clients that bought that that long ago, right? Like initially bought it. And so I had looked into doing crowdfunding and Kickstarter. It was actually my favorite platform that I found based on my product, based on uh, other campaigns that I saw on the platform. I decided, you know what, let's go ahead and do it. So I launched my Kickstarter campaign and it's actually weird. I tend to do it like in like October, November all the time. Like that's like my thing now. And it was an absolute success. Um, this is actually a, a little bit of a, like a screenshot from like the video that we did at like my old co-working space in Hollywood. And then um, we also have like me in the back of my roommate's car driving to UPS because they were not picking up, or USPS because they were not picking up my packages, um, filled with orders. So I was able to sell probably about a third, around a third of my stock. So that was like 250 units, uh, or sorry, 250 orders that went all over the world. Not only were they sold in America, they were sold in Canada, they were sold in the UK, they went to like Laos and Vietnam. I'm like, I don't even know anybody, anybody there. Um, but it really allowed me to not only support myself with 
having um, a healthy margin on my on my uh, my business, but healthy like having money in my account instead of self-funding everything. But then it also proved that this is actually something that somebody wants, even though they've never seen it, sight unseen, that they believe in the product, they believe in the purpose that I have behind it, and that it's going to do really, really well. Now, of course, because I am interesting, I like to play a lot with different strategies. I've tried doing the pre-launch thing with some of the items, but it's always come back to Kickstarter. So these are the four products that I've launched using Kickstarter. And um, of course, we have the first one, which is the Clarity Journal. Then, of course, I did the pins a couple years ago, and that was a very small Kickstarter. We hit 150% of that goal as well, but it was like 1500 bucks, so that was just for fun. Um, of course, with the an initial Kickstarter, it was 150% of the goal as well. That was $15,000 USD. And then um, I ended up doing the uh, gratitude journal and that was 105% of the goal. So around like $5,000, a little over $5,000 uh, USD. And then last but not least, we just wrapped our last campaign to bring up our new manifestation planner, which is like, oh, so nice. Um, and we hit 173% of the goal, raising $13,000. USD. Um, now, of course, in between here, it's again, not all like sunshine and roses. I actually had a failed Kickstarter. Was it really failed? I don't know. It was one that didn't have the results that I had anticipated because I totally bit off more than I could chew. I was trying to launch a gratitude journal, a dream journal, and a manifestation journal. I'm like, yeah, I have this many people on Instagram. I could do it. But no, it was way too much. And then so I canceled that campaign, relaunched it, and just did the gratitude journal and we rocked it. So the last thing that I actually have been doing is I've been doing a lot of consulting with other companies as well, really supporting them and also growing their companies too. The last client that we got to uh, do a really great campaign with, we also hit 150% of his goal. He raised $15,000 USD to launch his clothing line. Now, the fun thing with this, is that before the manifestation planner Kickstarter, all of these ones, I did the videos myself. Well, the first one, I didn't do the video myself, but all the other ones, I did the video myself. I did the landing page myself. I did the sales myself. I did all the outreach myself, meaning that the project was really, really lean. There wasn't a lot of overhead. There wasn't a lot of expenses. And of course, I was able to get the cash flow that I really needed to make my business a success. So here's some stats that um, are not shocking but they uh, really show how much crowdfunding is very supportive. And there's so many different ways that you could crowdfund and we'll get into that as well. It doesn't just have to be Kickstarter, but Kickstarter is the platform that I enjoy, especially for product-based businesses and I often use. So as you can see, a plethora of us like to self-finance. Um, and again, talking about women of color and women in general, uh, we tend not to have as much access to people, or friends, family that have like, you know, hey, here's a small loan of a million dollars to start your business. I think this will be cool. No, we tend to pull from our own uh, coffers and then alternately look at our credit cards, lines of credit, et cetera, et cetera. However, $30,000 is the average cost of starting a small business. So it makes more sense for you to look for outside financing or bring in some extra money versus doing it yourself. Now, one of the tricky things is a lot of these business loans that they have for entrepreneurs tend to have really high interest rates because you're just basing this on your minimum viable product or on like a business plan or something like that. While again, doing crowdfunding, you just get to cut down a lot of that. And then you also get to move product. Now, one of the fun things about Kickstarters as well, or crowdfunding as well, is that it addresses a lot of the reasons that small business fail. So you're able to bring in the funding that you need. You're able to test your model and see if this is, again, something that people actually use or people actually want. And then, of course, you actually have to employ a successful marketing initiative to have that, that money come in. Um, again, really taking a lot of the risk out of it because you're pre-selling things, because you're having that cash flow coming in instead of buying and holding and then attempting to spend more money to push those things out. One last thing that I do want to touch on is that um, with a lot of uh, the companies that we have out here, when it comes to VCs uh, and getting outside funding, they tend to invest in a lot of things that either um, have like a really clear exit strategy where you can, uh, where they can actually monetize it, turn it over, and some for, unfortunately, for a lot of the companies that are out there, we're not here to just sell a business. We're here to build something, create a legacy, pass down generational wealth. And that's something that, unfortunately, a lot of VCs aren't really very much interested in. So, again, 
building your own business by building your own income. So let's see if some of like what some of the good things and some of the bad things about crowdfunding. So some of the great things is it gives you the opportunity to test the market with a minimal viable product. So for my first product, basically I had gone ahead, paid one of my friends to do the design work because I had sketched out exactly what I wanted. Um, and then I was able to order a sample and all that sort of stuff. And with all that, like it was less than a thousand dollars to get that together. Then I was able to start selling it after, you know, doing the video, et cetera, et cetera, versus spending, you know, like $10,000 on product and then having to spend additional money on marketing, right? You're able to see, do people need it? Do you even have the right target market? Are you able to communicate your value? And this is a problem for a lot of makers. They love what they, they're doing. They're passionate about it. But when it comes to actually selling it, that's where they get stuck. And unfortunately, unless we sell it, unless we talk about our businesses, nobody can buy our stuff, right? So this is actually a very clear test of that and that you're doing it and you're doing a good job. Another thing is the social proof. When somebody that, um, if you're talking to, let's say like a retail investor, a retail uh, place that you want to sell wholesale, um, then you're actually needing to say like, yeah, uh, people will buy this. Like I know people will buy it because people have bought it, right? So um, having that social proof of them being able to just go on a website and say like, wow, Cheryl, you raised this much by yourself. Like that's pretty cool. Like I know that people are enjoying this and they keep coming back. So that must mean that you're doing something right. Um, also, again, with investors, them being able to see you're dedicated enough to this project to do all of this extra stuff. You're not just like a fly by night person it speaks volumes about your integrity and your character as a business person. Um, now, one of the fun things, again, that I speak about over and over again, is a successful campaign can really incorporate a lot of your costs. Now, of course, you're going to build in a budget that has a lot of this as well. But then this could be R&D, your product itself, storage, marketing, fulfillment, paying for your own time. This is all super important to make sure that you have a long lasting and successful business. Now, another fun thing about this is that you have the ability to attract amazing people outside of your circle of influence. Not only are you just talking to people through social media marketing or like through social media and like calling them or texting them, or I was going to say BBMing, but we don't do that anymore. <laughs> I'm like messaging them on Twitter you're able to actually attract a lot of new people by their friends and family sharing your content as well. Now, as we know, word of mouth marketing and word of mouth advertising is the most effective way to advertise. And then for me in my last campaign, I want to guesstimate between 65 to 70% of the people that bought into this last project are all brand new clients, which is great because I can also remarket to them. I can sell to them and offer them new things that also help solve the problem that I'm looking to um, help them with as well. Last but not least, easier conversion. A lot of people will really understand, oh yeah, you just need me to buy like a $60 product, a $150 product, a $300 product. Awesome. Um, versus uh, attempting to sell them uh, equity or attempting to just be like, can you just give me money to support my idea because it's really good? It just, uh, for me, I really love the energy exchange that you're actually giving them this additional value that you know and you can stand behind that it's great, that it's good, that's going to be good for them. Um, and I just, I enjoy that a lot better than, you know, just setting up a GoFundMe or just asking to receive funds without anything in return. Now, of course, with everything, it is a lot of work. And a lot of people, again, will, and you'll see this, you'll go on Kickstarter and you'll see some of these campaigns where people have like created a video, created some pledge levels and were like, hey, buy it. And then, you know, the 30 days will go through and nobody's purchased anything. And because there's a lot of pre-work, you have to reach out to people, you have to touch people at least three to six months before you want to launch your campaign. This could even look like activating some people in PR, um, reaching out out to your network, all these different things uh, to make sure that your uh, project is effective and that it works and that your campaign is successful. Budgeting incorrectly. So this is fun uh, because you want to make sure that you put in everything and then also make sure that you put in a little extra of just in case money. Um, there's actually been a situation where I've contributed to a Kickstarter campaign and it was for a friend of a friend. And they had, of course, had a huge launch. It was for a yoga mat that was like a non-slip yoga mat. And based on results, they made over six figures on that particular uh, launch. However, 
because of budgeting on the back end or overspending on ads, who knows? They actually reached out to all of the people that pledged and asked for more money for shipping. Yeah. So not only does that leave like a salty taste in uh, the your people's mouth that are really trying to support you or like really interested in your idea, um, your branding, it like your your integrity as a brand just really, really sinks. And even today, a lot of people are ask, still asking for their money. Like this is like, I want to say five years ago that this campaign happened. Um, a lot of people still haven't received product. It's just a mess. Um, another thing is you are going to have to educate your audience. A lot of people are not clear with how do crowd, how does crowdfunding work? What do you mean I pledge today? And then, you know, if we hit the goal, then it pulls the money. And then like, what do I get? And how do I pick my color? All these different things. So you are going to have to be able to communicate clearly. This is what this looks like. This is the budget. This is where the money is going to. This is the timeline. This is when you should expect your goodies. Also, last but not least, investing incorrectly. A lot of people put a lot of money in the pizzazz, like a great video and like 3D renderings and all these different things instead of the essentials. Putting a money into a copywriter that's going to be able to communicate value and having appropriate calls to action, being able to communicate, you know, your benefits and your features and why that this is important and how this helps them. Um, also, even taking a look at building leads and making sure that you have enough email um emails in your pipeline so you can actually reach out to people and touch them and follow up and make sure that they convert as well. So there are three main types of crowdfunding platforms, which you can see. Now, there's also another one that doesn't really quantify as crowdfunding that some of you that are in more of like the food-based business might be open to, like Kiva. Um, Kiva is, is like a micro loan. So then you're able to ask for money from your network and then you're paying it off in small increments over time. So that's another opportunity as well. But of course, we're talking about crowdfunding because I would prefer not to give anybody any money back. I would prefer not to take huge expensive loans with interest rates either, right? Um, so pledge mates. Uh, common platforms are Kickstarter, which is Mabu, and uh, Indiegogo. Now, this one, you're um, primarily going to be offering reduced pricing and exclusive items for being an early adopter. This could also look like um, memberships. It could look like discount clubs. It could look like a whole bunch of different things. There's a donation base like GoFundMe and Patreon, and usually you're offering digital options, you know, backstage passes or access to like your process, or in some cases, nothing at all. It could be, again, support my vision so I can build this and because you like me. I mean, it works. Um, another one is equity crowdfunding. And then this is actually something that's newer that's coming up. Um, one of my favorite ones to use is Start Engine. I had a chance to do some work with them when I was in California as well. Now, this one's a little different because you're offering shares of the company. You get to pick, do you want them to have um, voting shares or not voting shares and all these other things. Now, the tricky thing with this is that you're basically bringing on business partners in some cases. And so you have to be very clear about like your finances, very transparent in like getting things done and, and telling people about everything all the time, reporting everything all the time, which you may or may not want to do in the beginning stages of your business. Um, I personally am not really a big fan of bringing people on board in that context unless they have like a zone of genius that is going to support the business in moving forward. So no anti-flow, like you don't get to keep telling me like I need to reach out to this person. Like I'm, I'm not going to do that, but like please stay out of my business. <laughs> but you can't because they own part of your business. <laughs> So there are four points of clarity that you want to make sure you have in the bag before you say yay or nay to crowdfunding. Now, first of all, I love a good business plan. And I know a lot of people are like, oh, no, business plans are so archaic. However, they help you get really, really grounded in your purpose, who you're looking to support, how you want to help them. And then it allows you to practice conveying that as well, being able to articulate your features and benefits, and then even doing uh, research, like talking to focus groups and stuff like that as well, and using their verbiage to put into your copy to make it easier for them to understand what it is you're doing, how you're helping them, and why they need you. This also gives you the opportunity to test to see if you can sell your product before you have marketing dollars. Nothing is worse than spending $10,000 on a campaign and you don't have have a clear like USP or you don't have a clear conversion uh, call to action or any of that sort of stuff. So you can test and see 
What do people want? Is this actually something that's viable? What are the things that are keeping them up at night so that you can actually communicate that to them as well? Another thing, your price and your budget. One of my favorite things um, is actually doing a competitive analysis. Now, this is great because it actually conveys like that other people are doing something that's similar to you so that there is, in fact, a need. But when you're actually going out and having conversations with people and saying, this is my product, this is a price point, this is why this is important, you're able to stand behind that and say that with confidence instead of giving out too many discounts or, you know, being unclear on why you're priced the way that you're priced and if this actually makes sense. Um, and I think even in regards to that, a lot of people really get caught up and they think, oh, no, people are going to buy this $10,000 uh, cheese grater because I made it. No, honey, I'm going to go to Dollarama and get myself a cheese grater. Like, I don't even like cheese that much. Okay, that's a lot. But you get what I'm saying there. Um, so the competitive analysis really allows you to play with where are where am I in the whole grand scheme of things? Now, doing a request for quote and a bid spread, this is also key because you don't want to, um, how do I say? One of my things that I really love about my sister is she loves shopping. She loves taking a look at different grocery stores and saying, get this from this place, get this from this place, get this from this place. Now that's really great because you're able to do that same thing with your business and getting clear on exactly what it is and sending it out to different manufacturers and making sure you have an A manufacturer and a B manufacturer and then comparing the difference between them as well. When it comes to costs, making sure you're factoring in your, again, your research and development, marketing, credit card processing fees, the charge of a platform, shipping, fulfillment, import fees, paying yourself, incidentals, there's all these things that are built in there as well. Last but not least, goal setting. Now, sometimes when you actually set up your uh, your crowdfunding campaign, it could be that your goal is to fund a whole run of like, X amount of units of your product above your um, minimum that you need to purchase, or it could be that you just want to get the minimum. It really depends on what you need and what your goals are. You're able to figure out how many units you want to produce, how many you want to hand, how many you want to have at a discounted rate, and this all will play into your budget as well. Okay, your push strategy. How are you going to move your units? How are you going to talk to um, people about it? Who are you going to talk to? Uh, are you going to go for more B2B or are you going to go B2C? What does this look like? Um, one of the fun things about this as well, um, during my last campaign, I had the opportunity to ask for help from a lot of people that are involved in like this sort of work. And I randomly DM Gabby Bernstein. And if you know who she is, she's like hashtag amazing, Hay House author, speaker, homies with Oprah. And she was actually uh, really cool and reposted my Kickstarter campaign on her social media um, that had over a million followers. And I was able to get some conversions from that as well. So really talking to people about your product, why it's important, why you love it will allow them to say yes so, so much easier. You also want to create an ad strategy. Are you looking for leads? Are you going to be pushing throughout the campaign? What are you doing after to make sure that you're keep, um, you keep those uh, dollars flowing in? Okay, and your purpose. What is the outcome that you want as a result of running your Kickstarter campaign? What is your idea of success? Some people just want to launch one product and then just, you know, oh, look, it's out in the world. I'm very happy about that. Some people want to, you know, be the next Oprah and like create like a multi conglomerate thing or like a whole line or and all this different um, items. Now that is going to go into this as well, because then again, you're going to be able to remarket to these people and talk to these people and see like what other ways that you can support them. Um, and then as you're building this in, it might be, it will play into your uh, stretch goals and like additional offerings that you have as well. You're going to look into your ideal sales channel. Do you want to go B2C, B2B, all these different places? And then again, how are you going to build your community? How are you going to touch these people? How are you going to nurture them and make sure that they feel loved and that they want to still work with you and they want to be involved in uh, the things that you're doing? So to go over those four again, We've got the uh, product, your price and your budget, you're gonna have your push strategy, and again, your purpose. So with that, that brings us to the end of this presentation. If you do um, want to start playing with a request for quote and a competitive analysis, I can send you a free template. All you have to do is take your phone, open up the camera, and then put it over the QR code, and it's gonna send me an email and I will send it back to you probably Monday or Tuesday with um, a lovely little packet with that so you can get started. And then normally I with my consulting, it is about 125 USD. I can give you a free 45 minute 
consultation. If you are past point number one, you know your product, you know what you want to create with that as well. So reach out to me and like, let's make some magic happen. Um, I'm so excited again to have been here and be able to uh, support you guys with your dreams, dreams. And so if you do have any questions, please start to pop them in the chat. And then um, I'll be able to <laughs> start answering some of these questions as well. I know there was a lot. I really love giving a lot of information. So. <laughs> I can also talk to you as well. Yes, I'm also on the panel as well. So questions, concerns, comments, I don't see anything in the chat as yet. Um, so many things, sticky notes, yes, laundry sheets, yes. Um, if you don't have any questions, that's totally fine. I could just talk a little bit more about some different strategies when it comes to the crowdfunding campaigns and what you want to do in regards to your budget. So I'm going to get started with that since we've got one minute left, one minute left. And uh, actually... <laughs> We've got one minute left, so we're almost done. Um, but if you do have any questions, feel free to send me a DM, follow me on Instagram. Um, we can always connect and do other things, but strategy is super, super important when it comes to building your campaign. So I'm so excited to support you as you go ahead and grow your magic, and I'll definitely be seeing you on the panel later on today if you do have any more questions. <laughs> All right. So no questions. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for having me here. And I'll be seeing you at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the panel. Yes, you say yes. Um, and uh, yeah, again, connect with me on Instagram. It's just please notes. You'll see my face really big um, and we'll be able to connect to do something. So with that, have an amazing rest of your day.